Question 26 says two rods P and Q of different material are welded together as shown in the figure. The thermal conductivities are 2K and 3K. The thermal conductivity of the composite rod will be that is both rods have equal cross sectional area. Dear students, in this case, if the effective thermal conductivity is Ke, it can be written as 2 by Ke is equal to 1 by K1 plus 1 by K2, where K1 and K2 are individual thermal conductivities that is 2K and 3K. This can be written as 1 by 2K plus 1 by 3K. On solving, we find a value of Ke to be equal to 2.4K, which means option number 2 is the correct answer. Now let us discuss question number 27. Dear students, question number 27 is based on the principle of calorimetry and it says that if 5 gram of steam at 100 degrees Celsius is mixed with 5 gram of ice at 0 degrees Celsius, then the resultant temperature of the mixture is, it is given that the latent heat of vaporization is 540 calorie per gram and the latent heat of fusion is 80 calorie per gram. Dear students, when the steam at 100 degrees Celsius converts to water at 100 degrees Celsius, we can find out the heat released and this will be equal to the mass multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization and this will be equal to 5 into 540 and this will be equal to 2700 calorie. Now dear students, the heat that is required to convert ice to water both at 0 degree Celsius will be again mass multiplied by latent heat of fusion. This will be 5 into 80 that will be 400 calorie. Dear students, if we find out the heat that is required to raise the temperature of water from 0 degree Celsius to water at 100 degree Celsius, we can use the formula ms delta T where s is the specific heat of water and which is 1. So we can write down 5 into 1 into 100 that will be 500 calorie. The total heat required to convert ice at 0 degree Celsius to water at 100 degree Celsius is therefore the addition of both of these heats that is 900 calories. Dear students, we can see that the heat released by the steam on converting to water is much greater than the heat required to bring ice at 0 degree Celsius to water at 100 degree Celsius, which means that the final temperature of the system would be 100 degree Celsius and it will not drop below 100 degree Celsius. Therefore, dear student, the final temperature is, as in option number 4, 100 degree Celsius. Now, let us solve question number 28. Question number 28 says, three rods A, B and C of same dimension have thermal conductivities 2K, 2K and K respectively. They are arranged in a T-shaped structure as shown in the figure. The temperature of junction is. Dear students, we can use the concept that the net incoming heat at the junction would be zero. For rod A, we can write 2K into 100 minus T by L, where T is the temperature of the junction plus 2K into A by L, 50 minus T plus KA by L into 20 minus T. This would add up to 0. Now, dear students, on solving this expression, we get 5T is equal to 320 or T is equal to 64 degrees Celsius, which means option number 2 is the correct answer. Now, let us proceed to question number 29. Question 29 is based on the Wien's displacement law and it says a black body at 227 degrees Celsius emit radiations with a maximum intensity at a wavelength of 300 nanometers. If the temperature of the body is decreased by 1000 degrees Celsius, the maximum intensity will be observed at. Dear students, from Wien's displacement law, lambda into T is a constant where lambda is the wavelength at which the maximum intensity is observed. Therefore, we can write down that lambda 1 by lambda 2 will be equal to T2 by T1 or lambda 2 will be equal to lambda 1 into T1 by T2. Initial wavelength is 300 nanometers. The temperatures are to be taken in Kelvin and therefore we can write down in the first case the temperature is 2500 Kelvin and in the second case the temperature is 1500 Kelvin. This will be lambda 2. On solving this expression, we find the value of lambda 2 which will be equal to 500 nanometers and hence option number 3 is the correct answer. Now let us proceed to question number 30. Question 30 says a bucket full of hot water is kept in a room. 
if it cools from 80 degree celsius to 70 degree celsius in 10 minutes then the time taken in cooling from 70 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius is the room temperature is 25 degree celsius dear students we can solve this question using the average method that is the average rate of change of the temperature in 10 minutes would be 80 minus 70 by 10 would be some constant k multiplied by the average temperature in this duration that will be 80 plus 70 by 2 that is 75 minus 25 that is the room temperature in the second case the temperature change would be 70 to 60 that is 70 minus 60 let the time be t it will be equal to k multiplied by 65 minus 25 we can divide these two equations and find out the value of t which turns out to be 12.5 minutes which means option number two is the correct answer now let us proceed to the next question which is question number 31 